Let's now look at Keynote. Keynote is probably one of the most versatile apps that there is around and it's one of Apple's three mainstay apps which is Pages, Keynote and Numbers and I do suggest that you purchase all three for your classroom. So I'm only going to focus on Keynote now but uh, suffice to say that Pages is similar to using Word and Numbers is a lightweight version of Excel but they are really excellent apps to use in the classroom and perhaps these are apps that we could look at in another 10 most fantastic apps course. Okay so let's focus on Keynote. So here we are again using Reflector and I'm going to search for Keynote and I've already have it already there. Go to the very front page. Keynote is basically like PowerPoint and you can create slides with text and pictures and also you can pop videos in there as well and you can also use graphics and tables and also some various shapes. So this makes for a whole range of possibilities for the classroom. So I want to just quickly show you a couple before we start looking at Keynote in more depth. So one of the things I did was create flashcards for all the letters of the alphabet. So let's just take a look at A. And because with Keynote you can use animation, it means that you can set up the Keynote to make it do things that you would like it to do that would be helpful for your students. Okay, so let's have a look at how this works. So I'm going to play it. What I've done is created the word list and the animation component means that you can make the pages do certain things or make the elements on the page do certain things. What I've done is created flashcards with A words on them. What I would have done first is brainstormed these words and had them on the board with the kids telling me what A words that they know. So we would have come up with a list. And then together we would have created this keynote as a class book, if you like. And then what I can do is go through the flashcard and get the kids to read the words. But what makes it really interesting is that I can have the word there and if they still don't know how to say the word or how to read the word then I can pop in a picture as a prompt. So if we go to the next one which is ARC, I can pop in a picture as a prompt. So it just helps the students by having that visual representation of what that word is and it's fun and it's quick to do as well. So we can then read this together as a class or using Dropbox, I've uploaded all of these class lists to the students' iPads. So that means that they can come in and just read these flashcards themselves. And they actually really like doing it because I involved them in the making of the flashcards. So they came up with the words and then we found the pictures together using another really great app called Clippish. So Clippish is an app where you can search for various images and save them on your iPad. You can also do it via Google image search as well, but Clippish is, is a really easy way. So you can see how the animation just makes this flashcard component quite interesting. If I wanted to, I could move the cards around, which I probably would do from time to time. So let's come back out and you'll see what I mean. So I might move the order of these cards around so that they don't memorize the words by knowing what order that they're in. So that's just one example of how we might use Keynote to create flashcards. So let's come back out. Now this is another idea that I have and this is creating a daily program for using our iPad applications. I initially set this up for students who have autism but then I thought well this would work for mainstream students as well because it's an easy program with visuals as well as words for them to understand. Again let's go to our presentation mode. Here you could put the student's photo and then of course their name. So I've just popped in another picture there just for aesthetics. So let's go to the next page. So the next page it looks quite busy but 
if you have a read it said that you can add any instructions you would like to any of the slides. The examples do look a bit cluttered but I really just wanted to show you some examples. So you can add pics of the icons and the titles or you can just add the icon, it's up to you. So if we go to the next page, so here's English. So I can tell the students what I want them to do. So I would like them to work by themselves in a pair, do the work in order, practice for as long as they want. If they finish early, they can choose another app to work with. So the next page tells them exactly what apps I want them to use. And I have a picture of the apps here. They're very clear on what apps I need them to go to. And then I tell them, depending on who the student is, practice your red words, do the activities and then take the test. So they would be quite familiar with what I'm asking them to do. Next page. So then when we go to writing, the same thing. Practice, do your activities and then go to their own list. So that means that they have a list in the school writing app that's their own that they need to practice with. Reading, I would ask them to read certain books choose the book, listen to a story, and then they would need to read that story on their own. And then I've done the same thing with math. I'm not gonna read through all of that. I'll just show you what, it, what that looks like. So this can be changed at any time. I can pop in here and change the apps when, I, when I'm going to upgrade them or have the kids move to another level. This actually becomes a foundational template from which you can change that, you know, change the pictures and the images depending on what apps you want the students to use. And then finally, I've said to them that they can finish with a game. The games that I have suggested are educationally based games. So they would be math games. So let's pop out of that. Go back to presentations. Let's take a look at another example of how to use Keynote in the classroom. This is a class story that we created and it's based on the Itsy Bitsy Spider app by Duck Duck Moose. By now the students will have used the app a number of times and will be quite familiar with the story. And from this experience we can invent our own Itsy story. I have each student give me a sentence and then either use an image search or screenshots taken directly from the app, the story can evolve. So this is a simple but effective way to create text and visuals to make a story. So we're not exactly recreating the same story but putting a different spin on the original version. Now using Keynote we're going to create our own presentation.